Well, good to spend some time here with uh, the head coach of the Calgary Flames and now the 2022 Jack Adams Award winner, uh, Daryl Sutter. And uh, Daryl, maybe just first of all to have Brian uh, helping present that uh, award. What does that mean? And uh, just the relationship with uh, with Brian and what he's meant in your career. Well, obviously, I have a special relationship with my brother Brian. Uh, he's the next one up in our in our rankings in terms of age. So, uh, you know, we played against each other lots in the Old Norris Division. He was captain of St. Louis, I was captain of Chicago. He was coach of St. Louis, I was coach of Chicago. So there's, so there's a pretty tight bond there. So to be able to hear from him, hear from him was special and it's, it tells you how fast time goes. It's Brian won it in, uh, I think, 91. Yep. So 31 years ago. Yep. And do you think about how much the game has changed, how much coaching's changed since then? And, and uh, so it was neat. Yeah, I'm interested about that because, you know, obviously uh, 1991 when Brian won it. And uh, congratulations to you, by the way, as well. And maybe just a thought on, on seeing the evolution of the game, too, and what you've seen in that time and, and how you've been able to adjust to it as these years have gone on as well. Well, the biggest reason I know that he won it in 91 because I was coach of the year in the International League in 1990 and we won the Turner Cup then. Yeah. So that was, you know, I was like 29 or 30 years old. And, and that's a one-man show back then, right? So yeah, now, no your staff, now your staffs are... Uh, five or six deep plus analytics so uh, it's there's a big change in the game and then obviously the way the game's changed so it'll be able to for, for me to be able to say that you know you coached in the 80s the 90s 2000 2010s 2020s and to have had success all the way through is is tells you not only the evolution but the, that how you change too Sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe a thought on your coaching staff. Uh, you, you mentioned you've got a big team too. What, what's that relationship? What's the dynamic been like here this year? And how are you guys able to? So first, you know, as the first is just important for the staff to make the playoffs. So it was for the players. I think it gets overlooked that there's players that or guys in our staff that come through the organization that have had very little success uh, at the NHL level. So it was important for them to go through it too. And you think about it and, and to be able to work together. I think that there's always five or six of you in the in the cave together, so you got to get along and you got to be able to argue argue your way through it and get get the job done. Yeah, those are healthy discussions, right? I mean, you say argue, but I mean, I would assume it's it, it's an important part of it, just making sure that you're challenging each other every day. Well, it's not just that; it's you know, it's a big step for at the National Hockey League level. It doesn't matter if you're an assistant coach, a video coach, or whatever. The toughest job by far. It's not, and I'm not saying it because I am that. It's, it's the toughest job in the organization, the head coach, because that's, that's always where everything comes back to. It doesn't matter from what level it's at. It always comes back to the head coach. So then the next part is those assistant coaches or your staff have to be top people. They have to be not only top people in terms of off ice, you have to be top people in terms of knowing the game and understanding what's going on, and that's that's the part that's always a tough part bringing together. I've always, quite honestly, I'm just not talking about my staff. I'm a firm believer you get as many head coaches as you can on your staff. And, and, a, and an old whole, an old head coach told me that once. He was, why would you want head coaches on your staff? They're just going to take your job. I said, I'm not worried about them taking my job. I'm worried about winning this championship. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe just a thought too on, on the season uh, takeaways from this year. And I know it's still fresh in the eyes of many, yeah. but uh, you know, can you reflect now a little bit clearer on, on on the entirety of of this year? Yep, I think you go back almost a year to now and what we asked the players to bring forward to camp in terms of being the best it could be. And I think guys did a good job of that. I think that Brad did did an awesome job of bringing in bringing in some veterans that had that are not only great competitors, but guys that have won, guys that knew how to practice, guys who were very professional in their approach to the game. I think that was very important to our team this year. It allowed it. Those guys, you know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, guys like Lewis and, and Coleman and Richardson came in and, and set the standard in terms of work ethic and practice habits and preparation. I think that was really important for that, that group of established players that were here to see that and to absorb that, which they did very well and, and filtered into their regular season. You look at look at all the players here that had career years, not just not by a little bit, by a lot. And that tells you that they've come a long way and that allowed them to be a playoff team, allowed them to win, win the division in the regular season, and allowed them to win four games in the first round. So that's that's the progress, that's the steps they took. And from everything you talked about going into last offseason and now as you mentioned and laid out there just some of those steps that you've taken, what 
you know, what is the importance of this offseason and this summer for those younger guys and to be able to build on that for next year? It's, it's a percentage raise the bar. Yeah. Very simple. I think that as much as we were, uh, our staff is happy with, with the, how the team trained and all that, there, there are always individuals that have another at least 5% and maybe 10% to add to the, add to the engine for sure. I also wonder about those the younger defensemen as you've talked about throughout the playoffs too and the experience that they got but you know what what type of potential are we talking about if they can continue to do that continue to raise the bar it's 100 percent is about consistency yeah i mean you, you can you can really really just spread it you can take the regular season and then take the first round take the second round see the difference in their games so the difference would be being consistent with it yeah. and understanding the importance of if you just take the last round and if that's if that's your how you get better? Well, there's there was four games were tied in the third period. Four games, yeah. right? So the, we won one, they won three. So there was a critical point there. Either it wasn't just scoring the goal, maybe it was preventing the goal. Right. And that's you know that's the toughest part is for young defensemen. Well, and you mentioned something today about about heartbreak. I mean, having some of that helps to add to you know getting back in those spots, not wanting to be in those positions, but it adds to it, doesn't it? In yeah. terms of going through, hey, it? pressure's good. Yeah. Either, either you can handle it or you can't. Guys that handle it go away and they move around. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, and just one last one for me, and that's, uh, you know, what the next few weeks looks like for you. I mean, obviously there's, you know, the hockey business. You guys had your meetings and, and, and players are kind of going on their way. What, uh, what does it look like for you here now over the next so while? It slows down till draft probably. I think that now it goes probably to, to Brad's level where he's yeah. working with guys and trying to get, you know, trying to solidify you know, some contracts, things like that. But I think for the coaches, it's it's uh, you, know, you do all your evaluations and and uh, see what you can do to uh, help the players during the summer. You go through with the medical staff who's who's rehabbing, who's doing therapy. Uh, we start training June twentieth, so that basically gives the guys three weeks. Yeah. Um, so you know, set the programs up into, uh, individually so the guys are specifically getting better at what they have to get better at. And then wait till after, after the draft and free agency, and see if we have to make some changes in terms, um, terms of system-wise, or detail-wise that is reflective of who we thinks on our team. Right, based on personnel. Yeah. Um, and then some farm work as well, uh, back over there. Yep, it's good. It's good. I look forward to it. Yeah. Um, just getting out in the hills. Yeah. Yeah, getting some time with yourself a little bit too. Spend yeah. some thinking time. Grandchildren, children. Children, yeah. Part. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate the time as always, and uh, thank you. Congratulations. Yep, thank again. you. Good job. Yeah, you too. Thank you.